that sort of told us two things, I think. One is we went back and analyzed the data, and both times when we saw the peak in infection, there was an opening in the sea ice on the Russian side. So we think that the introduction of the virus was associated with low sea ice. And then the second thing that this told us is that now that the ice is open more often, we're wondering if this type of movement of pathogens with animals could become more common. The reason they could move further, we think, is because the ice was open. So there used to be a land bridge that the ice formed so that these different populations could not come in contact with each other. But as the ice is reducing, there's many openings now, and they might be more moving further because they might be looking for food. So as the Arctic warms, the fish go deeper and also maybe go further offshore. So animals are having to move further to find food, and as a result of that are coming in contact with other species that they probably never used to. It's probably transmitted through respiratory droplets, so when animals get sick, they're coughing on each other, and then also by direct contact. So we think that the seals are able to give it to each other when they come up on land and they come in close contact, or when they're feeding at sea, because of course many different species will feed together at sea when there's a large school of fish there. Polar bears potentially are becoming extinct because of the fact that they rely on seals for food. And as there's less ice, they have to travel much further to try to find their food. So people eventually will have the same issue if they're subsisting on these animals and having a hard time finding them because there's less ice for them to hunt on or the animals are further offshore beyond where they normally hunt. So I think as the Arctic changes and the environment's being affected, the animals are being affected, which in turn will affect the livelihood of people living up there. The virus is probably already in the Arctic, so there's not really a way of stopping it. The question is trying to figure out which species might be most vulnerable and how to protect them because, you know, you can't really vaccinate really large numbers. You know, the Arctic's really big, um, it's very remote, and it's not realistic to think you can access enough animals to protect them. Mm -hmm.